So I have started the recording, and uh, Karamjit, if you want, you can continue from here. Yeah, hi. So I just want to uh, check one thing. I still don't see any responses. Uh, do you see the questions pin? Yes, yes. On the yes, right no, side. I think, yeah. Are you able to see people's eye over there? No, I can't. You can't. Okay, just give me a second. I'll make you an organizer. Now you should be able to. Okay. Yeah, I can now, certainly. Great. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. I, my name is Karamjit Singh. Uh, and uh, thanks, Atish, for inviting me. Uh, and thank you all uh, for having me. So I'll just quickly start. Uh, so Atish already covered about myself. So I'll just uh, briefly talk about myself. Uh, so, you know, you already know I am working as a director uh, in MasterCard. So a little bit about my journey before we get into the session. So I started uh, uh, my my education uh, from the education point of view. I did my master's in mathematics and then I went on to do the gate exam and then get into the IITs do the M tech. And then eventually I started my career with TCS. Uh, when I started with my career with the TCS research labs, or we call it innovation labs, uh, that time, like 10 years back, uh, that time nobody was talking about machine learning, AI, but I was the fortunate one, I would say, uh, who get to start his career uh, in the domain, which would be going to be very, very popular in near future and that's exactly what happened so i started machine doing machine learning and ai when nobody was talking about it or i would say the buzzword of ai uh, was not there uh, so during that time period uh, tcs research lab the focus area for my job was to uh, publish a lot of papers do a lot of research in the machine learning part of it and that's exactly what happened I end up publishing a lot of good papers in the top conferences and uh, then eventually uh, I moved on uh, to get the experience of uh, industrial experience in the sense that can I uh, use the machine learning and AI to actually on the real products and work with end customers and that landed me through the couple of companies in between but that landed me to MasterCard. And currently what I'm doing is I am leading a unit uh, and leading a couple of products which are AI driven and our goal is to build uh, the, the products for MasterCard and their customer and its customers uh, which are AI driven uh, which are focuses on the cyber security which are fo focuses on the risk and the fraud uh, for our customers which are banks and uh, merchants and yeah so that's pretty much uh, a summary of my uh, journey still now and like I said, I'm really glad uh, to to be here and thanks for inviting me advance, uh, you know, advancer and Atash. So let's get into it. So guys, so uh, I would really like to make this one a little bit interactive in a sense that the things which I can I am asking if you can able to respond to it. I think it will be a much fruitful session rather than just me speaking and you listening and then uh, you know we would we, we do we will take Q and A especially the Q and A from your side at the end. But uh, in between I will definitely try to make it a more interactive. So you know have your fingers on your keyboard. Uh, ready, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions or like more than a couple of questions I would say So one thing I would start on is that you all know this is AI is a quite a buzzword now Everyone is doing everyone wants to do AI everyone looking for doing the like most of the people it's it's very uh, very hyped word one of the hype job is it a real hype or not hype which we will talk about in this session but even after a lot of hype and a lot of buzzword, 
if you go to the very basic question of what is AI, what is machine learning, what is deep learning, you might have heard all these words machine learning, deep learning, and AI. Now, the, what I have realized is that even after so much knowledge around it and so many people wanted to get into it, we are still, people still sometimes don't understand the difference between these three words machine learning, artificial intelligence, and deep learning. Now you can see that on your screen, but I would really like to see if some of you can share your understanding the difference between AI and ML and DL. Have you heard of you must have heard of AI. You must have heard of machine learning probably also and also deep learning, right? DL. What do you understand apart from what you see on the screen? Anyone? You can, anyone can write and share their different uh, uh, definition if they feel that they they understand the AI versus ML versus deep learning. While you're sharing it, I am not sure if I am able to get the response again. But do, I do see the our older responses. I have. But I think uh, you know anyone who would like to share their thoughts, whatever be that thoughts, you know, correct yes, incorrect yes. doesn't matter. Feel free yeah, to yeah. do so. Okay. Let me go. Uh, yeah, so you can keep sharing it. I, I'll just uh, keep talking about it. So, so this is this is where I why would I would want to start with it because this is the the basic I would like to clarify today that what is AI, what is machine learning, what is deep learning. So first of all, AI is artificial intelligence. Okay, so I got one response giving some flow of work and that needs to be done in our constraints by user machine. That's thanks, Bhavish, for sharing your thoughts. Now, in very simple term, AI, artificial intelligence, why it is called artificial intelligence? Why the word artificial? Actually, because what we have as a human, as a human brain is called real intelligence. And what we want to create is artificial intelligence. We want to mimic the intelligence of human. And when you mimic something that is obviously artificial, not real, and that's the why the word is artificial intelligence. It's 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 the opposite of real intelligence. What we have. So what we want to do eventually is we want to build machines. We want to build machines which can have which can mimic the human like behavior. How can they mimic human like behavior? They need a human brain. What is a brain is an intelligence. We have real intelligence. What we want to mimic is an artificial intelligence. And that's what makes it AI. We wanted to create the end to end machines. Now, when I say machine, don't some some people just start talking about thinking about robots and all. No, Alexa is a machine. Which serves you the question answering purpose. There are many things around us which I will talk about which are which are artificial intelligence driven. So the idea is that build something with an intelligence of a human brain such that it started mimicking some task which human can do. Now every product every right now we are in a stage that we have a very limited focused product like Alexa can give you question answers only it cannot walk and it cannot act as a human totally, but it does serve a one purpose. Right. Similarly, there could be a machine which does only one particular task. So we are solving things one by one, whereas human obviously can do multiple things at once together. But we. We were building right now machines putting an in intelligence so that it started mimicking some task. So that is the overall artificial. So artificial intelligence is a superset. Of everything where we there is a machine, there is intelligence and then there is a task end to end. What is machine learning? Machine learning is a subset. Of artificial intelligence, a field which contains the algorithms. How does you how do you build the intelligence you build using machine learning. 
you build using machine learning so the algorithm part algorithm part which you basically use to build the intelligence is called machine learning space it's a it's a field in the computer science where you have algorithms which we use to build to make sure that learning is there the intelligence is there so that's what machine learning is and what is deep learning deep learning is a further subset of machine learning that's where mostly people get confused though people often use the ml and ai interchangeably now deep learning is a further subset of a machine learning it's a it's it's a new space which recently being emerged very very quickly you know starting 2005 or 6 or i think 2010 later it really get emerged so quickly which is making ai as popular so machine learning is was there for 1990s or 80s it was there for starting 80s already but why didn't you why it was not hyped now there is a subset set of algorithms which work on a particular type of data sets which i will talk about that is called deep learning and that's what making this artificial intelligence so popular it's not like that ml was not there it's not like that ai was not there it was there but now the new field which has emerged called deep learning which made it which is which is actually helping making ai very very popular across industries across because the kind of accuracy is the kind of performance the the kind of sophistication we get from the algorithms is which is coming from deep learning is like you know you are actually coming near to the human intelligence why uh, in the why 5 years 10 years back you didn't have the google home alexa and all these things at your home you didn't have this sophisticated algorithms remember i don't know i may have many of you had like series used to be there but none of the other mobile used to have a voice assistant siri was also not very good but now the voice assistants and everything is so so uh, sophisticated it has such a better accuracy now now it is in the end consumer hand and where it is getting driven it is getting driven from the deep learning space cool so that's what the difference between the artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning So I have one more response. So Ishan has shared his thought. Deep learning is a program that contains algorithms used to analyze and assume data. Machine learning is a superset of it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So machine learning and deep learning is basically about building that intelligence. Okay, and AI is when the end product is there. AI is basically when you build something which has an intelligence to do end-to-end -end task. So so Alexa or Google Home, these are AI products. okay these are a, this is ai but with the underlying algorithms when you say uh, can you play a song now how does alexa understand that that intelligence is coming from the machine learning and more specifically deep learning algorithms i hope everyone now clear what is ai what is the difference between ai machine learning and deep learning absolutely there is for the whole space of understanding ai is about understanding ml and deep learning and that's where the whole data scientists come into picture we are not going to build uh, we not going to bring the uh, hardware piece we are not bringing the 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 rest of the pieces the machine piece and the interaction piece no where we come into picture the computer science people we come into the picture of understanding the machine learning and deep learning we come into the picture of bringing the intelligence the brain there is the other teams who brings the body who brings the lungs who brings the kidney who brings the to make sure that a whole machine is working what what we do we bring the brain that's it and that's what the machine learning and dl does okay so like you you can just have a same analogy imagine a a human without a brain and similarly a machine without a machine uh, you know a, a working machine without an ml or dl algorithms cool so like i said i'll keep taking questions uh, on things but then at the end of the day at the end of the session i will give you separate time for a q and a 
but you can keep sharing your thoughts okay i'm reading things parallelly i'm very uh, i i am very used to this particular portal like like atash mentioned i am taking a lot of courses uh, at a various places so but yeah for audio questions we will take at the end yeah sangeet uh, this is a very valid question you will you we will uh, i will answer these questions on the flow while i am doing this and you will also get to know maybe many of the questions like that very generic like how do i start my career and all that it will come clear eventually but yes you are right if you want to anyone wants to start an un career in ai they need to have understanding of machine learning and deep learning very simple intelligence is something we bring in okay okay now let's talk about in general a little bit opportunity of ai so why this ai is being hyped really big is it a genuine hype is it a is it just a hype hype or is it like a real thing so and we are not saying that this is actually a very very re very high reality in today's world many of the experts have termed this as a biggest revolution as compared to the big revolutions we have in the in in our industrial revolutions so in 70s we had a railroads and steam power and mechanical production that was considered as a, one of the biggest industrial revolution and then in 80s we had a mid of 80s century we have uh, electricity and electricity considered to be a one next revolution industrial revolution and then in 60s late 60s 70s in india i think 80s 90s we got electronics computers and you can imagine right this is the era we lived in this is a revolution we all most of us already lived in like maybe some younger people here might have seen uh, you know the ai uh, the tablets and the computers when uh, when it was already matured for some of us like me i still remember when i bought a computer it was uh, it was it had a hard disk of something uh, some 512 mb imagine a computer with 256 mb not gb mb so that was the arena like we actually seen that the era of cyber cafes when we we, we used to go to out and uh, use the internet so era of that so that revolution was actually now you can see everything is changed because of that so that was the third revolution and many experts are calling this artificial intelligence is as big as that revolution as you see the th last three revolutions because what has been believed that everything which is actually everything after electricity changed the way we lived changed everything after computers changed way we lived way we operated way the day to day activities were there everything got changed and similarly people believe in next 5 7 10 years after ai which is already here now everything around us will change and it is changing we are not realizing it we it is changing and i'll talk about that in more detail like many things are all changing but there will be a very soon time when then you can't imagine without ai and that is happening so andrew ng i don't know how many of you already know him he is one of the uh, uh, legend of uh, machine learning and ai space uh, he I, i don't know how, have you heard of coursera coursera there is a online portal then byju so he is the founder of that um, he's promoting ai big time all across the world so he quoted that just like electricity transformed everything 100 years ago ai will transform everything in next several years and it has been believed by many many experts so this is just to show you that how big is this it's not just a hype how big is this revolution which is which is where we are actually right now living in so why this happened lot of things actually came together to make this happen it's not like that suddenly there is someone who can think of deep learning algorithm that's why uh, it, you know it got popular no you know why it got popular deep learning or machine learning why it got popular it needed three things and before 2000 
we didn't have i all three and after 2000 we started having those three and now we have all three what are those three things first of all it needed data remember there is a wave of there was a wave of big data anyone experienced that there was a lot of hype five seven years back big data big data big data hadoop right so 10 years back five seven ten years that is where world started storing a lot of data that is where the world storing a lot of data earlier we were not storing it earlier there was no data so one example is that 90 percent of the world data has been created in just past two years imagine the pace we are storing the data so data creation and store that was the first big thing which was actually not there earlier so we solved that puzzle first thing second hadoop came and everything came so data storage was done second was computing there was no fast computing. There was nothing like that. There is nothing, no fast computing. And then came the GPUs. You guys heard of GPUs? Graphical processing units, machines. We didn't have GPUs. So when the GPUs came, we had the second thing which we needed for machine learning. You know what was the first, when was the first algorithm came? 1986, the year I was born. Neural perceptron by jeffrey hinton and why it took so many years to that thing to get popular now when when i'm going to teach a course the first thing i'm going to teach is perceptron why nobody cared in between we neither had a data we nor had a machine it was actually a futuristic someone someone jeffrey hinton is called the godfather of ai he was so visionary he gave that algorithm so back now people are picking it so the second thing which got resolved was GP computing and one one little exercise to all of you. Let me show you, you know, sorry to get diverted. And this is I actually show it many times to my classes. Also, you would be really amazed to see this. Let me show you one graph. Okay. Let me share my screen. So you see this graph, this graph, this is Nvidia share price and look at the exponential growth. When it started, when it started 2017-18, it's actually started had a bunch on 2016 and 2017-18. Can you, can you imagine that three years, four years back, you really started the AI hype? You think of it that AI started, hype started with this. And this is actually, if you put the AI hype graph, this will look like that only. And why NVIDIA is experienced this? NVIDIA builds GPU machines. And without GPUs, no AI exists. NVIDIA gave the computing to the world. There are many players now, but NVIDIA is a front runner. And that's why as the AI grow, NVIDIA grow. And look at the growth over the last 10 years, 50, 20 years, and look at the growth now that is this is what ai did to one company which is building the computing to the world you understand so that that what you can actually relate that what happened to so that was the second piece which got resolved and third was the intelligence which i think a human already had the algorithm part people start developing the good algorithms which works earlier people didn't put an effort because they didn't have the data and they didn't have the computing and that's what happened in last 10 years or seven, eight years. Why the hype got created? Got it? Cool. Now I will very quickly talk about few things which we will, you know, you get to hear a lot in the uh, in the f sessions only, but I want to cover a little bit about difference between the traditional machine learning and deep learning. So what I'm talking about is a space between like this machine learning part and deep learning part. So machine learning minus deep learning is called traditional machine learning. We call it a traditional machine learning. So the whole study, the whole thing, whenever you do a course, wherever you do, you will find 
it into the two parts there is a traditional machine learning algorithms there is a deep learning algorithms and what is the difference why deep learning got very popular the major difference between the traditional machine learning and the deep learning is that traditional machine learning what is the cycle there is a data you create features from the data then there is a model you put those features into the model and then the model get trained what deep learning did is it actually eliminated that feature creation piece what is feature by the way like when i'm saying feature first talk about let's talk about the feature what is a feature think of a very simple thing i'll give you an example from my domain and i would really like to see some responses now okay so let's say i give you a problem you are you know being a human you don't have to have solved by model let's say i give you a problem of solving we mastercard faced a very big problem that whether the transaction is a fraud transaction or a real transaction right you can agree to that like fraud or real transaction and understanding and if it is a fraud we don't want to accept it we want to reject it so we want to identify whether it's a fraud transaction or real transaction now as a human how would you identify let's say that you have a uh, resources and everything to see the transaction and identify whether it's a fraud or if there is no model if i give you the task to label a transaction whether it's a fraud or not what are the things you will look for what are the things you will look for to say something is a fraud transaction or not a fraud transaction someone said number of attempts yes that is right that is one thing what else what else you would look for to say it whether it's a fraud transaction or not amount very good point thanks manka amount yes imagine like someone is doing only 50 dollar transaction suddenly there is a transaction of 5000 dollar it could be a fraud what else anyone else can think of any other thing which you will see and see that okay this could be an important thing to identify whether the transaction is a fraud or not frequency location absolutely location is very important you are sitting in gurgaon and when the transition is happening in ladakh behavior personal account details all these things right yes absolutely many people are talking about amount location this is good now what are these these are features see you don't know the machine learning but as a human you were able to tell me that what are the features to use to identify whether something is a fraud or not that is called feature and what happened in traditional machine learning we create features on our own from the data you have to create your features and then put it in the model model will learn okay that's the traditional machine learning algorithms which will be linear regression logistic svm random forest uh, boosting based algorithm bagging based algorithm all that stuff clustering and everything but then there come the deep learning why there was a need of deep learning there are things where we can't create features as a human you can you be very surprised to know why can't we create feature we have a real intelligence let me give you a problem let me give you a problem let's say that you want to identify whether a particular thing is a cat or dog let's say you want to identify a particular particular picture is a cat or dog now how do you identify think about it like when you identify something is a cat or dog what are the things you look for color okay anything else size like ear shape nose shape eye shape face shape the pattern the the tail the legs the shape of everything isn't it you basically you are a now you are a grown up so you can't think of it imagine like how a child would identify something is a cat or dog it actually our brain process this thing we our brain process this thing that's why we are able to do that now let me give you this do you see something on the screen now if i tell you seeing this thing whether it's a bird or animal what do you think 
it's a bird or animal if i give you bird or animal no it's one of these i'm giving you it's one of these what do you think what do your brain is saying bird your brain is saying bird many people are saying bird why it's a beak right but is it really a bird it's nowhere close to a bird but still your brain what happened really i gave you a feature to a brain and your your brain predicted and i gave you two classes your brain suddenly give you a class, uh, predicted the probability that it's a very high probability that it's a bird rather than a the, than a uh, animal why because your brain store the patterns it did not store the full picture and just from the pattern it give you that okay it is likely to be bird than the animal because it is like a beak right so that's what happens now the problem is when there are images how can you create the if there are million images how can you create a feature such as beak imagine creating a feature as beak or creating a feature of a this shape creating a feature of this shape the tail the face it would be very difficult as a human like from a transaction it is very easy to create a feature you collect the feature such as location you give it to the model you collect a feature amount you give it to the model but if i give you a picture of a cat like imagine i give you a png picture of a cat how can you extract a beak out of it and it will be so difficult if i there are million of images and you know these are the features which will help to do that these are the feature which will help you to do that so that's where the deep learning comes into picture and that's where the deep learning what it does it eliminates the process of creating features and deep learning and serious uh, similarly for the text it is very difficult to create features from the text there are millions and zillions of the words in the world you can't create a feature from the text so what happens that that's why the text data and the image data the text data and the image data video image video text anything these kind that's where deep learning is very very popular and that's where deep learning is used for the data such as mastercard data which has structured data transaction every transaction is a row and the features you saw it amount these are called structured data we use traditional machine learning where we create our features but for image data for video data for text data where you can't create feature it is very difficult to create features that's where we use deep learning and deep learning is actually popular for those data only and if you look around whatever new ai has happened it is happened in the image data video data text data speech text everything around that that is where the deep learning comes into the picture you see a lot of apps nowadays face app which can change your face make you look old make you look younger change your hair there are a lot of filters on instagram everything is ai and the data is image or video right you do it now there are chat bots you send a chat you get a response there is there is a computer talking to you what is the data text someone do do you guys write a gmail when you write a gmail you started getting a uh, now I, i don't know if you experience it you started getting some uh, suggestions when you're writing an email has anyone seen that has anyone seen that when you're writing a gmail you start getting some suggestions what is that predicting the next word what is that ai what is the data text whatever revolution is happening is happening in text video images or the data which has a sequence someone said time series yes time series has a sequence that's where the deep learning real power of deep learning comes into picture where you can't create a feature it is difficult to create features and that's where deep learning creates its own feature and learn end to end but that does it mean that traditional machine learning is not useful that it is absolutely useful because 70% of the companies still have structured data we at a mastercard don't have image data don't have text data like we don't we have some but the major data is a structured data rows and columns 
If that is the data, then the traditional machine learning is used. If the data is image, text, video, sequence data, then the deep learning comes into picture. That's what it happens. That's what it is. Okay. That's the difference between a traditional machine learning and deep learning. Cool. Moving on. Uh, some differences like traditional machine learning, I told you is work on a structured data. If you look at the last point and the deep learning used for text, video, images, etc. Traditional machine learning can be trained using lesser data. Deep learning, you require large data. Obviously, deep learnings are better algorithms. So, but for the structured data, it works better. Uh, you need a lesser data, then you need a lesser time for traditional machine learning. Traditional machine learning can run on the CPUs. For deep learning, you need GPUs. Traditional machine learning takes lesser time, but then takes a lesser tuning, which I we, we you will learn what is the tuning when you get into the details of the course and all that, which I don't want to go into detail. But another important point, traditional machine learning is high on explainability. Like you can explain the algorithm, but you can't explain the algorithm in deep learning algorithm or output to the customer. So if you see here, both have advantage and disadvantage, and that's why both are relevant today. So if you start AI, it does not mean that, okay, deep learning is something which is very popular, so I'll do only deep learning. No, deep learning is used for subset of the data. And where is the must so some of the data which is only traditional machine learning is used and traditional machine learning is still relevant will be relevant and deep learning is relevant and will be relevant. So both have their own spaces. Why not DL prefer for structured data because for structured data we like I tell you for structured data usually the human the domain knowledge you can't overpower the domain knowledge like think of it this way manka you don't know the ai and i gave you the problem you you were able to think of the features very instantly you neither work in mastercard if i'm not mistaken nor work in a payment industry you you are able to think of the feature very quickly like within the milliseconds if i ask our algorithm to create features obviously it will not create it so structured data where the human can create their own features that's why you can't overpower that really you can't beat the real intelligence when the domain come into picture when there is a domain like someone like me work in mastercard for three years i can give you so much detail about the payment industry no algorithm can give it i can create so many features which nobody can even think of outside of mastercard that's where the structure data is something where you can't overpower the power of features which is coming from real intelligence so artificial intelligence can't beat it and and when you learn the dl you will get to learn that you you will see that that there is these algorithms which are in the deep learning such as cnn rnn lstms these are built for these data sets only which have a image or the sequence kind of data Okay. So, like I said, the obviously the deep learning does overpower the performance, but don't be, uh, don't, don't be, you know, confused with this plot by just thinking that that their traditional machine learning does not do well. This this particular. Uh, plot is for that if you use let's say the traditional machine learning on image data or the text data then you will get to see something like that deep learning really overpowers everything and why this plot i'm showing it because earlier we used to use the traditional machine learning on the image data and that's why the ai was not popular it was marginally beating the human and you were you guys are not nobody noticing it but deep learning came it beat the hell out of everything the voice the text the image the the data sets the the problems we are able to solve with 99 percent 95 percent accuracy which was not happening earlier 
so this graph is actually showing you if you use the traditional machine learning on the text and in the uh, on the images or video data what is the difference the performance difference deep learning and traditional machine learning brings and that's why like i said the deep learning getting making the ai popular because around us everything is mostly it's amount around us is the image or text all the apps everything the we we do the swap reel tiktok everything is video images we chat text we type email or we use lot of image and text data we create lot of image and text data. that's why the ai is getting popular because the deep learning is getting working very well on the data in your daily part you don't create structured data that is what industries have you want you are not collecting transaction data but you are creating text data you are creating video data you are creating image data that's why the deep ai is getting closer to human being but does that mean that we don't uh, ai works on its own real power of ai comes into the partnership of human and ai human are already needed many people ask that ai will eliminate the jobs and all that stuff it is not like that now i might not be able to answer you today that what ai jobs new things will happen but think of it this way when electricity came when computers came everyone thought that everything will be automated but what happened that as a human we gave a lot of task which we used to do as a human on our own to computer and then as a humans we move on to do better things and then we created a lot of new things to do and that's exactly what is going to happen ai is going to automate many things which we humans spend our time to but then as a human we will be now once you have a time we will be move on to do better things more ev evolution more revolutions we're going to do that and that's where it will create a new jobs that's what happened in computers also i don't know whether you know aware of when computer came in india uh, like there was a lot of protest when he when the computers were introduced in the banks that the bank's job will die there will be no one working in a bank did it happen now what happened opposite of it there were a lot of things which a human were doing in the bank which we hand over to computer and then human were able to do a lot of more things which happened expanding the banks like exponentially right that's what exactly the ai is going to do it's going to eliminate few things but as a result it's going to create a lot many things so that human is needed in the partnership to bring the domain if i tell you there is a problem of cpp do you know what is cpp you can't know that if you don't work in a mastercard or a payment industry it's a common point of purchase where that problem who will tell you who will tell that to a machine the domain is very important for solving any problem so it's always a domain which come from human plus ai which brings a real advantage okay now let's talk about ai in our daily lives like i said lot of you lot of us do use ai but we don't realize it navigation the google maps there is a image video which is happening at the back end at the real time obviously it's not purely driven for ai but lot of machine ai intelligence is being used in that smartphones you know very simple thing face recognition you open your phone from your face there's a ai recognizing a face fingerprint that's ai recognizing something whether you are a real uh, matched person or not then within there there is a lot of apps like i said face app changing you from younger to older yeah right change your then there are a lot of filters everything around that like which is social media and content recommendation like social media why when i open a amazon why do i see a diaper because i have a one and a half year daughter at my home but why don't so, why someone else see something else 
that is the recommendation intelligent recommendation which is amazon or someone like flipkart is doing using machine learning and ai right then social media facebook can anyone guess where is where is facebook using uh, ai Where does the Facebook using AI? What do you think? Can anyone think of it? First of all, feed. Your feed is personalized. Now they have like for you some window. Like there's a tab called for you, which have videos for you. How does it learning it? It is learning that recommendation. What are you watching is something which you are learning and they are learning the algorithm and they are giving you that only. The more the most important part is the feeds. To to increase your screen time. If they start, let's say I'm op I'm a Punjabi and I open a Facebook and uh, Facebook is random. It started giving me some Bengali videos or something. Will I spend a time on Facebook? No. It is sending me a good. It is giving me a feed of Punjabi videos. Punjabi election is going on nowadays. Some news, some Punjab song, and all. It knows I learn that. I I like that thing, so I'm spending a time. Similarly, have things happen to you. You are interested in politics. You will see a lot of politics video. You are interested in Bollywood. You will see a lot of Bollywood videos on Facebook. That's the first thing. There was another thing which which they stopped recently. When you upload a video, they already they automatically give you that. Uh, do you want to tag this person this person they actually recognize the person and then give you suggestion did anyone experience yeah so that was again face recognition and then giving you the suggestions a lot of lot of things like that then smart homes smart homes is something is actually in the process you don't see a lot of things but a lot of things like in at least in gurgaon a lot of builders are launching the homes by calling it smart homes like you know everything is connected with alexa or google home you you know that kind of things are coming up like you are saying uh, please switch on the tv switch on the you are just saying to your home and it is reacting you must have seen that there is a future it's going to happen so a lot of smart homes in coming yeah google photos also does that yes then e-commerce i already talked about e-commerce uh, amazon flipkart healthcare healthcare lot now you don't see that in a front end but lot of lot of at least in us lot of uh, image kind of products are being used by healthcare industry uh, for example uh, now the ai the deep learning can process the mri image and can give a better better response like whether there is a malign tumor or not than a actual doctor it is there it has been proven that actually seeing an x ray they can tell you what is it how good is it how what is the condition rather than a better than a human doctor what is that image data like i said image text everything around is popular is image text mri scanning mri is and x rays and giving the diagnosis that is what the fun thing is happening but there are other things that are also happening in healthcare which is basically uh, many hospitals are using it uh like uh, if someone is getting admitted they are using algorithm that given the conditions how long this person will stay in a hotel what is that they are doing the demand optimization hospitals are predicting how long you will stay in a hospital so they would know that at what day they will have how many beds or empty imagine they, that is what is happening even hospital because you can imagine like if you ask a doctor as a human like this person has a this this condition and it is getting admitted obviously doctor can give you some estimation right like 5 days 3 days admission but a large hospitals they can't collect that data and then do the one overall overview of thing what are the products being sell to a healthcare or the ho uh, hospital big hospitals that we going to you admit something we going to do this algorithm to predict how many days it's going to stay and then we going to give you the optimization and give you going to give you the uh, predictions that at what day which how many beds you will have an empty so they can plan things that kind of thing which we can't even think of it
banking financial services banking think of it banking what is banking does there are a lot of digital banks now which which opens your account by you know video camera and everything right and then we are in a bank like financial services we do a lot of ai like we predict whether the transition is a fraud or not so that sometime your transition get rejected or not right so we do a lot of lot of ai to send it the products to banks and all that and then obviously autonomous vehicle autonomous vehicle uses basically every part of the deep learning and machine learning there is a image data video data the lot of text data which is not of structure data which is basically the uh, the the data which is coming from the uh, car real time such as what is your speed what is your gear these are structure data like you have a speed you have a gear you have a clutch you have a pressure you have all of the things like hundreds of codes you are collecting then there is the image data someone is looking at the shield front screen someone is doing the real time whether there is someone is near or not object detection everything is bringing into the autonomous vehicle right yes someone mentioned you this this apps like mantra misho there is an ad on misho someone i, I don't know whether you seen it kapil sharma sponsored it misho what is it you click a photo and then they give you a dress right someone seen that everything that is where the real power of image and that that data is getting used the apps like mantra apps like this misho and all these these are the using flipkart they are using this image data a lot to find the similar products right so ai is around us like like i told you think of it that way uh, like the gmail the linkedin it gives you the responses automatically that you need to type this right you don't you we are doing it we are not even sure, we are not even realizing that this that ai is around us in so many ways and like i said it is a revolution right now you be a part of it or not it's up either you are a receiver of it or you are basically a creator of it is something which individual have to decide now very quickly few things which you already know but some numbers in uh, some things in the stats like this is the top 10 jobs in demand this is 2020 data top 10 jobs now at these are top 10 jobs and look at the y axis you will find three to four jobs in top 10 just related to ai what are those data scientist ai researcher intelligence specialist three ai data analyst four machine learning engineer five at least these are the five clear jobs which are just coming from ai domain now people call it a different name which i will also explain that what different job means but you can see like 40 50% of the jobs in demand in today's world top jobs are actually related to ai jobs so that's why the revolution is happening people and industries are started realizing it then what countries are participating much obviously china is leader in this one there is a usa japan is there uk is there and india is also there so the good part is india is in top 5 but india is has so much potential and there is a lot lot to cover and lot of whole lot of world is looking at the india side of to create the next ai works workforce why india created first of all india created the first works force for the bpo space we did it we completed it we moved on we move that bpo moved to indonesia malaysia philippines now then the india created software engineers software developers we did it we own it now we are owning it but india right now does not have enough ai people we don't have it and that's where the next wave is we have people but a lot of people are still in the previous revolution which is the software developer revolution with the current i current technology revolution is ai revolution okay very quickly i think you would understand now like and you would know would, would know that the jobs which are related to ai such as data scientist machine learning engineer as at par and even 
are many places earning much higher than the top jobs. The average salary in US, you can see software dollars 100,000, 100, whereas AI research guy got 136,000. Machine learning guy, machine learning engineer is earning 120,000 starting salaries. This is the average salaries. Okay. This is how the growth happened. I, you would see, I told you guys, this, this graph and NVIDIA graph will look like same. What is this graph? Demand in AI jobs. Like percentage of the jobs getting filled by AI people. The growth looks like an NVIDIA graph, right? 17, 18, 19. Obviously, 20 went much higher than that. So obviously, like I told you, that this is again with the with goes with the hype of AI. So that's how the jobs and the demand and the percentage fill are growing in AI. Now, is it AI getting used in, in only one industry? No, AI is getting used everywhere. The information industry, information information technology, uh, finance, the administrative shop, like you say that every industry has an upward tick. Admin support services, like this is the like, very popular, right? HR, the, the chatbots and all that agriculture is growing manufacturing there there is some linear growth there is some exponential growth but every industry has an uptick has an uptick that of using an ai so it is there in every industry now one last thing which i want to cover is like there are lo lot many jobs in ai which comes under ai and i will briefly cover what is the difference in each of that there is a job called data scientist. There is a job called ML engineer. So data scientist is the job where you focus heavily on the machine learning algorithms. Okay, which is the most popular job today. Okay, most popular job is data scientist job. You focus on ML algorithm DL algorithm, then you are a data scientist. You know the algorithm part of it. You know how to implement them. You know how to train a model. You know how to test a model. There's a machine learning engineer job. This job is about supporting the deployment of machine learning algorithms. Like when I build an algorithm, when I build an algorithm or model, I need to deploy it for deployment. You need a lot of other stuff such as you need a cloud knowledge you need a uh, knowledge of kubernetes you need a knowledge of apis more software developer work so someone sit someone who sits an intersection of software developer and the knowledge of machine learning is an um, ml engineer that's also another important hyped job because we build a model but we don't deploy it there is someone some other team which deploys it and make it happen so you need a lot of engineer who software engineer who knows apis who knows uh, stuff related to deploy the machine learning models such as like i said dockers kubernetes uh, the gpus all this stuff these are the two core jobs then there's ai research scientist you can think of it that when i was in machine in tcs innovation lab i was being i was more of ai research scientist Okay. What is that? When your focus is more on the research side of it, there are a lo lot of companies who have a research labs for machine learning. So then you publish a lot of papers. There you need more theory knowledge. You need a, uh, I would say you need a good background in terms of education, like top colleges. So these these jobs are mainly filled by the people in top colleges coming from the research background or at least masters have some papers or have an interest in that that's where the ai research scientist is so they basically focus on the research side of it like there's a tcs innovation lab ibm labs there's a google lab in india now microsoft have a research lab every big company has a research lab which has a machine learning oriented there's a product manager when you grow in your in your space you become product manager. Who am I? Now you can call me. Right now I'm a product manager. I passed the stage of data scientist 102 and now I'm product manager because I am owning up products of AI. 
I am I'm a owner of couple of products which are in live in the market. So then I manage a lot of business uh, side of it. I lot of manage a lot of stakeholder side of things. Uh, I'll manage a lot of uh, I actually being responsible for technical leading the technical team. So basically product manager is one which leads the AI products. And when I say own the AI product means owning up the managing the stakeholder side managing the market side managing the technical team side all the sides of it which comes like if you grow in your career. So eventually you become product manager. Then the two and three which is big data engineer and BI developer is lesser machine learning or AI more on the data side of things. Big data is morely on the big data space. People link it to AI because because the reason is the look at the whole cycle. There is a data stored in Hadoop. Someone needs to pull it. The data came. We need to build a model. No, but who is managing that data side? Storing data, managing the whole Hadoop side of things or cloud side of things. That is a big data engineer. So that space data is a part of it. So managing that whole big data side of things is big data engineer, but less that does not need a information on the uh, machine learning uh, algorithms and all bi developer is uh, is more on the side of a visualization you are, must have seen there are tools like tableau other tools which basically people use to create fancy outputs and eda data analysis that is bi developer again no algorithm knowledge but more data side data analysis and using the existing tools to build some reports fancy PPTs and all which is also required. So that's also a part of circa and then there is a separate space of robotic now robotics is a space where the end machines are robots, but the intelligence is still machine learning and deep learning, but they have created their own space. So they have created their own space. So these jobs are still separate like if someone has experience in robotic space like the you there you also need a lot of machine learning knowledge and algorithm knowledge so if i summarize where do you need a machine learning knowledge and algorithm knowledge you need in one which is robotic scientist you definitely need in four you need in five five you don't need a full you need you might work with like half a knowledge or a, at a high level but you need a lot of engineering side of things and then six which comes with experience like you can't own a team or lead a team you don't have experience and seven you lead a like most knowledge seven is where you need a only theoretical knowledge like you need to read a paper and everything so that is how and in the two and three two is you don't need any data science knowledge or machine learning knowledge you basically support the data science team and then third is is about the uh, data only you don't train the model but before that the data analysis and the visualizations and building the bi to the business intelligence tools okay so that's what all the different kind of jobs now the the uh, the buzzing question how to start a career in ai and i'll quickly summarize now because uh, okay I'm good with time, right? Okay, I have five, seven minutes, I guess. How to start a career in AI? I think that is the obviously the question. You know, AI is there. Everyone wants to do it. What are the things they can leverage? Now, you must have till now understood that you need a machine learning and deep learning algorithm knowledge, right? That can come from courses such as what Advancer will offer you. Right, you need that. Okay, and I'm not here saying because I'm talking from advancer. I do hundreds of webinar and like I said, I am a supportive of building a AI workforce in India. We don't have enough people. You can't imagine even after so many hype. We don't find good people for interview in MasterCard. We are still looking for people to hire when I say good people. It's not like that. We need people so we'll hire anyone, but we still have a lot of lack of real talent in AI who actually understand things rather than just putting things in their resume and where do we check that the first thing we will check is fourth part do they understand the algorithms or not and where can you learn that the courses you can't be there you have to put that two three four months effort of doing the courses or understanding the whole space there is not one algorithm there are n algorithms 
you need to understand the whole whole course then you need to do a lot of hands on which comes with the courses lot of assignments lot of projects you need to do that you need to pass through that otherwise you can't ha have that other than that everything is supportive you need to learn the python language jupiter the python is something which i think when you do a course you obviously learn it uh, so python is the one which is used no other language someone might say r or no no only python okay that is where then statistics you need to have a basic statistics okay don't now many people feel that oh, we need to know a lot of mass and all no don't worry about it you need a basic mass okay everyone can understand that much of mass it's just a hype that you need a lot of mass yes you begin to become an ai research scientist then you need a lot of mass you need to understand the theorems you need to write a paper mathematical and everything but for data scientists for the uh, for becoming the ml engineer for data scientists for for these kind of job no you don't need a lot of math but yes you need an intuition you need an understanding of the algorithms statistics is also the basic statistics basic very basic what are the different distributions uh, the skewness kurtis mean median all these things nothing major okay p value these kind of things then apart from that now when you do a course you, that comes with a package that gives you the algorithms knowledge that gives you the uh, coding knowledge that gives you statistic knowledge all these things but then there is a part of things in which you can do on your own to push push your career faster up against the other people there is a kaggle kaggle is a very important uh, space for people who want to build their career in ai you will go there there are a lot of live competitions there data competitions so when you go there you will see that there are a lot of competitions like data challenges when you get to learn a bit of knowledge of machine learning in ai start participating on those competitions not from the perspective of winning it but from perspective of learning it you will go there you will see that lot of people have shared their codes lot of winner of competitions have already shared their codes that how how what model they build what is the data analysis they did what are the features they build you get to learn from them that is why the kaggle is most popular for starting in career and participating in hackathons is like more like it's the same thing either you use do that on kaggle or you do it at in entry in live competition the difference between a kaggle and a live competition is kaggle you also get a live competition but kaggle you got a lot of learning also but if you feel that okay now you are uh, you can actually win competitions you do start participating in ha uh, hackathons or some data challenges i still do it i love that space i uh, last year i participated in the the top data challenge called kdd kdd is a in conference which does that we came in top 10 like at a world level it was a great achievement then the last last year there was cikm which is one level down from kdd we came second in the world so we, i still do it i had participated in number of data challenges because that gives you the uh, you know real a uh, granular knowledge like what features to create what data to change what model to change to get actually extra 1% accuracy that kind of thing so yes do participate in these things it really gives you the hands on feeling so that's it from my side uh, i'll hand back to uh, uh, to advancer now okay so you can take it over so then we can take the questions at the end right sure sure uh, let me quickly share my screen <clears throat> just give me a second right guys i hope uh, my screen is visible to you now <clears throat> so uh, thanks karamjit for uh, you know this very very insightful session on uh, ai and especially taking these participants through how exactly they can start off building their career in ai and that's uh, something which is very important now uh, you know i won't take up much of your time any further but just to give you a brief overview of the programs that advancer provides you to actually upskill and start your careers in ai and these are very prestigious programs in association with some of the best institutes and universities around the world so especially in artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, we have a program in association with iit kanpur it is called as the advanced certification in ai and ml 
And in this program, you are going to learn uh, Python, you are going to learn machine learning, and you are going to learn deep learning, right from basics onwards to an in-depth level, right? Uh, you will be able to start your career in artificial intelligence after doing this program. And through this program, you will also get certified by IIT Kanpur. So this is a very prestigious program. You know, uh, we get a lot of applications for this program and there are very few people who get shortlisted for each cohort. Uh, similarly, we have a program on data analytics uh, for those people who probably don't really come with, uh, you know, uh, background in technology so this program is suitable for anyone who uh, you know from a non-tech background and uh, 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 you know uh, people who are not engineers or uh, people who don't have any kind of uh, mathematical or programming background this course would be more suitable for them it covers predictive analytics statistical analytics of data data visualization tools like r sql and tableau and again in association with iit kanpur and then we have a program in between which is called as the pg program in data science in association with uh, ups which is one of india's uh, top universities and also uh, you'll get a global certification from gisma business school germany so this is a program where you learn not just data analytics but also machine learning uh, so this in brief is uh, uh, an introduction to our programs and now i'd like to open up the floor for q and a Q &A. so if you have any questions that you'd like to ask feel free to put them in here and uh, either karamjeet or i will handle those questions so i already see that you know <clears throat> there are a couple of uh, questions asked by ishan and also by manka so i'll take up ishan's question which is for the courses do we need any prior knowledge so again as far as the artificial intelligence and machine learning program is concerned if you have uh, you know prior uh, background or some kind of basic knowledge of programming and college level mathematics that would be very helpful for data analytics essentially uh, there's no specific requirement for data analytics or data science uh, Karamjeet, if you could just uh, take up Manka's question, which is on uh, yeah. free cloud GPU and TPU options. So yeah, so hi Manka. So basically, uh, uh, there are few uh, free cloud based. Uh, so first of all, there are GPUs, there's CPU, then GPU, then the most computing you give it get as a TPU. So there are few uh, free clouds. Uh, there are the Google Collab, C O L A B, that gives you the free uh gpu k8 uh you can use that uh then kaggle also give you the free gpu uh so for the basic algorithms uh, not high end for some data but definitely uh kaggle and google collab is the one which is the most popular in terms of using the free gpus yeah thanks uh Karamji, for that uh, Nikhil, uh, basically the course that is most suitable for you if you know some basic ML is the advanced certification in AI and ML with IIT Kanpur. That will help you upskill yourself. Basic knowledge of ML is great to have, but uh, you know, you'll need much more to actually start a career in AI. So that is where uh, this program will come in. So yeah, Nikhil, so yes, you don't need a GPU system to learn. Uh, yes, you need to GPU system to deploy the real world products, but you don't need to learn because like I said, uh, most of the traditional machine learning, you can do it on CPU and the deep learning algorithms, you can do it on GPU, but then you can always use the Google Collab, uh, which gives you all the GPU power free of cost. Uh, Sangeet, your question is, will you get an IIT alumni status as well if you do the course from IIT? So this course comes from, uh, you know, one of the divisions of IIT Kanpur, which is the ENICT Academy. So you'll be considered as an alumni of that academy as part of IIT Kanpur, not uh, uh, the entire IIT Kanpur alumni status. Uh, Vishwanath, your question is, you are a master's in maths and working in supply chain planning. Which course is best for you in AI? Uh, so Vishwanath, since you are already a master's in mathematics, uh, I think the ML and AI course will be good for you. So the advanced certification with IIT Kanpur, that will work best. Or you can also look at the PG program in data science, depending on your requirements. 
Uh, Nikhil, your next question is, what are the job prospects provided by Advancer? So Nikhil, we provide complete uh, job assistance to all our students who complete these programs. We help you with your resume preparation. We help you in terms of your interview preparation. Mm -hmm. And we send across multiple job opportunities to you available around the country, uh, uh, you know, in AI, in data science, in data analytics. And wherever you are interested, you can apply for that. And we will take your CV, send it across to the concerned people in the company and uh, uh, help you get shortlisted for interviews. Sneha, you are from a non-tech background. So again, the data analytics course will be best for you. Uh, all the, just to inform you guys, all the details about these programs can be found on our website, which is advancer.in. So feel free to visit that and take a look at it. And I believe you might already have received some of the details uh, from our counselors. Swarup, uh, you're working in a testing profile and having basic Python knowledge, which you use for automation. Is it possible and better to switch towards AIML? Absolutely, Swarup. So, you know, testing profile as a whole, and probably even Karamjeet can elaborate on that, a lot of it is going to get automated out, especially through AI, right? And you are also doing part automation already, and slowly but surely that, uh, you know, automation will move towards the AI structure. So it is best yes, for you to keep yourself prepared and upskill yourself for that. Yes, absolutely. So, yes. So I think um, this, this is a natural upskilling for you. Right. Amit, uh, you mentioned that you are a BI engineer with bank, you no know, experience in stats, etc. Will AI be a good choice for you for future? And how much diversion does it have from your current profile? So you are already working in the field of data, Amit. You are already working in BI. So uh, definitely, this is more of a natural progression for you, a natural upskilling process. Uh, maybe uh, I am not exactly sure of your, about your education background. But probably what you could look at is starting off with the data science first and then looking to do artificial intelligence. Uh, Nikhil, the duration of the advanced AI and ML program is 10 months. It's 500 hours of learning. <clears throat> um, Deepi, your question is you're working as a BA techno functional role. Uh, you want to go for the data science course for AIML, would it be fine if you start with data science and then look for AIML? Absolutely, DP. So, you know, in data science, we already cover machine learning. The aspect which is missing over there is deep learning. And you can cover deep learning separately later on through our program. <clears throat> Then uh, next question is Nikhil, difference between advanced AIML and PG course. So again, Nikhil, in advanced AIML, we won't be covering uh, R as a tool over there. Uh, we will be starting straight off with Python. In the PG program, we'll cover R and Python both, but we won't be covering deep learning over there. So in AIML, you get to learn deep learning. In PG course, you'll get to learn R and uh, statistical analysis of data. Sangeeta, you are into teaching career from the last 15 years in computer science branch. Can you get a good job in IT based on these technologies? So IT companies are you know, large recruiters of uh, data scientists and AI engineers around the world, Sangeeta. Uh, since you have been teaching in computer science for quite some time, quite clearly you have a good theoretical understanding of computer science and I'm assuming programming. So definitely you can leverage that and move it to the industry. Uh, Nandan, your question is you are into ERP domain, how it can help as a software developer. So Nandan, ERP is basically a system which you know enables data collection, uh, data storage, and the dissemination of uh, data and information throughout the organization. Since you are already at the first step of a career in you know a data related field, uh, again a natural progression in terms of upskilling is to learn how to actually use that data, analyze that data, make sense out of it, and help your organization. Uh, improve its capabilities. Right. So I think it's clearly a natural progression for you. Uh, 
So I've reached the end of the list of questions. Okay, there's one more from Animesh. Uh, you have already done your MTech from IIT Kanpur, working in the government media sector. Do you think you can change a stream at the age of 44? Well, Animesh, uh, nothing is impossible. Let me put it like that. Yes, yeah. the number of jobs available at your level or at your age in this industry will be much fewer. Uh, but uh, what I believe is that a lot of uh, what you learn here can be implemented already in your sector. If you are working in media, media analytics again is a very big area. So if you learn you know, data analytics, you can definitely use that in your uh, current sector itself. Once you gain experience in data analytics, you, utilizing it in your current sector, then you definitely can move out, out of that and look at different other uh, organizations and industries. I just want to add one thing. See, uh, sooner or later, every company either will start their own branch of doing some sort of machine learning AI or they will hire a third party to do that. So if you are already there in your company or in your sector, if you already have knowledge, then you are a natural leader and leading that thing from front. Like MasterCard started AI Garage three years back. There were people who were doing in the they were doing in the, in the consultancy and then one or two people from that who were already had some knowledge didn't have much knowledge but they were neither they were made the leaders in that and they were asked to start that unit so sooner or later every company every sector will do that now you can if you have a knowledge you can become naturally you don't have to transit anywhere you can naturally become a leader in your own company and start something and being a being a lead of that whole thing because many companies are adopting it so even if you are working in that company where no no one is using an ai right now trust me it's going to happen in the next 5 years every company will start their own branch or they will hire someone to do the ai for them thank you Nandan, regarding the duration and course fee, you can find all the details on our website. We will have the details also sent across to you. Uh, is there a specific course you are referring to? Uh, again, in case other people have questions, please uh, feel free to ask. Uh, we have another two to three minutes remaining. AI and ML. So Nandan, uh, we have two different modes of learning for that program. One is the live online class where every Saturday and Sunday we have live classes held uh, driven by experts like uh, Karamjeet. And uh, you know, the course fee for that is uh, 1 lakh 50,000 rupees plus taxes. It's a 10 month program. And uh, uh, at the end of this program, you get uh, you get a IIT Kanpur certification once you complete a certain number of projects. The other option to learn is called the self-paced option, where you learn at your time and pace through recorded videos of these online classes. And uh, there's no time limit or duration over there. You can do it at your time and pace. And the course fee for that is 95,000 plus taxes. All right, so I don't see any further questions coming through. So, you know, we can uh, probably end the session here and I uh, definitely like to thank Karamjeet for sparing so much of his time and uh, putting in so much effort into this. Thanks a lot, Karamjeet. Uh, we appreciate this a lot at Advancer and I'm sure uh, all of uh, the attendees here have learned a lot through this session. And thank you, Atash. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, interacting, making this session super interactive. I really liked your questions and all the very best to each and every one of you uh, in your future endeavors.